There he is. All right, cool. So um, the last thing we kind of talk about how, how to present the work. Is this something we want to talk about now or as we move through the work and see what it looks like? I think it's something that would emerge as we move through the reflection process. So, I mean, one of the things that I was thinking about, and, and so I just said, let's wait. And then I say, here, I have an idea. Um, one of the things, have you seen um, the work that Emma Irwin has done on her, I wanna call them scorecards or they're just, they're small um, activities that you can do. And it says things like, this is a 10 minute activity. Here are the things that you can do to reflect on DNI. I'll try to find them, but maybe something that's you know, really tractable and approachable for other, other communities that may wanna do something similar. I, I just really like it because you can look at it and think this is only gonna take me you know, half a day or this is a, a week of effort um, to really Im improve our, our DEI efforts within our community. I'll try to find those real quickly. So you mean that in the aspect of like a personal reflection or is this something that a group does? It would be something that a group does. Okay. But I think probably led or initiated by uh, one of the um, people in, in leadership of the group. Would that be accurate, Matt? That would be accurate, yeah. So somebody within the community would have to take up the effort and lead the effort within a community, but then the guides kind of tell that person how to how to move that effort forward. And yeah, I think it would be, oh, sorry, go ahead. I was just thinking, when are we going to be starting the self-reflection? Do we have a timeline on this as well? Um, I'd say 2021. So I'd just say we've kind of started now the process. So yeah. Elizabeth and I still have on our agenda to kind of craft a letter that describes this what we've talked about a few times and then reach out to the potential folks. Okay. Sounds good. So um, the next thing we have on our agenda is the burnout submission. Um, who has that on there? I was looking at Ruth, did, did this ever go, you and I had worked on this a while ago. Do you remember the Moz spaces? Yeah, I was supposed to like give feedback on the oh, um I have been away. I think I've had my own share of burnout. <laughs> so um yeah it uh, it didn't work out. Uh, I think it was um, I got the mail that was uh, two weeks ago. Yeah. Okay. It wasn't it wasn't accepted, yeah. Okay. Thanks for the thanks for the info. I'm sorry it wasn't accepted. Should have been. So um, I think I have something. Um, um, so first, I, I I think I said it in the other meeting, but I just like want to repeat it here. So the last submission we had for the budget project was really that the last badge we gave up rather for that DP, DPK. Yeah, it was really, really good. And um, the conversation that went on, I think this was this is the second and this is like the the longest, the first one wasn't this long ago. Um, the conversation went on really well and we're like able to, you know, make a change on the context they have like on their website if the if the um, conference is um, accepts diverse and inclusive participation. I know um Matt um, emailed me on Matt G emailed me on that. Yeah and um, which I really like made a very good change, which, you know, made me feel um, we are really doing so much with this budget project and it's actually um, on, on a long run, it's going to like help uh, so many people that are left out, right? So it's going to like help help them feel welcome to whatever conference or whatever project they are getting involved in. So it's just, uh, this is just like, a, uh, would I say, um, say thank you or a, we are doing great 
coming back. <laughs> but it's it's really good, and I hope the project keeps like improving um, more, uh, more and more. So uh, what I wanted to say, I don't know if like anyone has someone in first step. I would really love first step to participate. I don't know how to do this, but I know I would really love first step to participate in this budget project. I don't know if we could like anyone has um, a reach out to the organizing team, something like a personal reach out to the organizing team, maybe to join the recommendation. I don't know. Because I think we, we, we tried um, sending a mail, maybe due to busy schedule or the time in which we sent the reach out um, to, they couldn't look at it or, it would really be great if first them could participate. So I don't know if anyone has like someone in the organizing team. I don't know. Do we who is who is the organizing team? Does anybody know anybody there? And it's wait, is FOSDEM happening? <laughs> uh, virtually. Virtually. Yeah, virtually. Okay. Yeah. When is it? I think the uh, first week of uh, February, six, seven. It might be a little tight. I mean, okay. it's something we could certainly reach out to them. We tried, if I recall, Elizabeth, we reached out to All Things Open kind of right before it was happening. And they said they were just too busy organizing. That was their response. As yeah, the time it got, got really tight. Yeah, yeah it got forwarded it, around and then, yeah, they were kind of ghosted a little because they were just too busy. So, yeah. I think with FOSDEM being next week, um, I think it's unlikely that we'd be able to get any of their attention because they're also using a new kind of DIY uh, virtual platform for it. I would be surprised if anyone has time to talk to us. We could try, but I think given that it's next weekend, yeah, we could actually maybe um, do it. Uh, we, should, we could actually do a personal reach out with other conferences. I think it, it works faster. <laughs> so in, with other conferences, we could like do a personal reach out just in case we like anyone knows or somebody in the organization like that. We could do that for like other conferences. Yep. So those are points really well taken. Um, we have been talking. We should probably reach out to Angela again at the Linux Foundation just to, to coordinate because she has expressed interest in 2020 and with the intention of kind of reconnecting in 2021. Um, we've also been talking to Solona at IEEE and they have a, a, maybe a million conferences that IEEE runs, but she's bringing the badging program in front of um, that conference, kind of this the conference committee. There's a group, it sounds like, at IEEE that is in charge of conferences um, or kind of monitors all conferences. Um, so we've been doing that. It, it freaks me out a little bit simply because of the potential volume of requests that could happen. I mean, the, the Linux Foundation alone has I, 100. 200 conferences. I mean, it's so many. And IEEE is the same. And so I think we really need to think about if it comes to it, what would happen if, you know, 10 conferences applied in, in a two week period, that would be a, quite a bit of work. Um, just because it's such a, to your point earlier, Ruth, it's a it's an awesome developmental process where if there's a this um, kind of high contact between the reviewers like yourself and the applicants to try to really improve uh, DNI efforts in the conference, which is awesome, but it, it just takes time. Um, and so I don't know if people have thoughts on this or share my concern, or maybe we'll just worry about that <laughs> when it happens. I, I, I really think that um, 
I, I don't know. Should we have some kind of, I guess, continuity plan is one term for it, but like um, some some kind of situation, a way to handle that situation if it happens or backup reviewers, things like that. Because the, the process can take five minutes. The process can also take like um, uh, several weeks of deliberation between the reviewer and the applicants like we saw, or the reviewers and the applicant. Uh, and, and it was positive and it was really helpful for the of an organizing team. In my opinion, that's how it, that's how it looked to me. But um, I, I think um, maybe we should have people that would be willing to be reviewers if the if the situation came that there was a lot of uh, like an influx of applications. Something like uh, an impromptu reviewer. <laughs> People we trust in the Chaos Project is probably the best place to go for that, but. I might also just add, even if we got, like the Linux Foundation isn't um, putting all their events on in one month. So even if they all submitted at once, we could prioritize based on the event date and just handle the immediate ones first and then just work our way down through the queue. So someone might be waiting a long time, but their event might not be till November. So I don't if that's acceptable. I mean, that kind of screws up if we're tracking like how long it takes to do a review. It kind of screws that up, but um, it might be okay if we don't care about it. Yeah, and I think that's a good point. And maybe it's just something that if it if it starts happening that we can signal in the issue that just says <laughs> you happen to be a submission that's occurring amongst. 10 other submissions right now. And we see that your event isn't for two or three months. So if you could just, you know, work with us a little bit as we get through the, the more higher, the higher priority events, at least at this point. Okay. Uh, maybe it might but, make uh, sense. Oh, go ahead, Vinod. So there is a marketing consideration for the events also. That's where they sometimes uh, put it in the advance so that they can market it with the badge or like have that frame of mind. So if we are putting them in on the backside for a longer period of time, that might be a thing from their perspective, like they need a marketing thing to publicize their event with the badge. I so think it's also... Go ahead. Yeah, so maybe getting from an idea from them, like what is the deadline to publicize will be helpful to prioritize the events also. Yeah, and we we have that two month lead time that does help with that, but there there can be definitely situations where the market where they want it earlier. Um, and I think the, the best way we can handle this is to be realistic and say, we'll do what we can. Um, we're not going to be able to like hire people as reviewers at this point and we're not going to be able to say um we we, we have a, we have 100 people to work with that we're just going to ask everybody to be a reviewer we got we got to do within reason what we can um but at one point we're out of capacity you know so i i, I don't think we're i don't know if we're going to reach it anytime soon but we have to be realistic and say we can handle as many reviews as we can in this period of time however many that may be we might, I don't know, it's, it's just the way, I think we need to be realistic about it too. Well, and I am also still facilitator for this meeting. <laughs> I think we only have one thing left. I was um, gonna, I was gonna say one thing. Is it worth, I'm thinking Elizabeth to put a call out even just like in the newsletter you know how you have the volunteer opportunities that this would be maybe a good candidate for that um yeah i absolutely can and um matt snell i can work with you to uh kind of just define that a little uh a little more like exactly what we want does that make sense yeah it makes sense to me And I think it might, like in the, when describing the op, the volunteer opportunity to say like, this isn't, um, this is kind of a long-term need as events apply. This isn't something that needs to be done right away. You know, like some of them, 
it seems like some of the volunteer opportunities might have some more like immediate connection to, to do things right now. And um, this one, maybe not so much. Got it. I, I would like to kind of return just real quickly to Don's point about DEI. Um, so I, I'm, I think that's a, a really good idea. Um, we would have to, there would just be a kind of a cascading set of things that we would have to change. So <laughs> that's all, but I, I don't think that's a reason to not do it, right? So I think, I, I think this is just something that has to happen. Um, and we can also talk about like which which bits really need to be changed. Like, do we really need to change the um, the GitHub repo name, or do we just need to change the working group name on the you know on the website and in the README? Because URLs are hard to change. I know I know GitHub does redirects and everything, but it's just it gets right. I agree, it gets problematic, and there is like a cascading group of things that needs to happen, but we might be able to just, just kind of rebrand it and leave some of the old links as is for now. I think that also brings up uh, uh, the point of, if we do add the E, then we need to add E metrics, equity metrics. So I think that would maybe translate into uh, another focus area. If we haven't thought of those things <clears throat> in the past, I think this is a great time to do that too to fully make that transition and fully make that, that change all the way through. That's a really good point. <laughs> so I like that. So what I'll do is I'll um, take a look at the website because I think it makes sense, the, the kind of the very forward facing things, the end of the line things and just see what can be, what needs to be changed there. Yeah, maybe just start there and <laughs> see how that goes. And then um, obviously the minutes are pretty easy to change. It seems like it's that middle spot of the GitHub repo space that might be a little bit more complicated than maybe to Don's point, it doesn't really matter. At least in, the, in those workspaces, it's more about the forward facing stuff. All right. Okay. Uh, well, uh, compared to all the exciting things we've been talking about today, the last one is going to seem really boring. I just meant, I just noticed that um, there's every time I find a agenda link in the uh, this is just for housekeeping, but I found a agenda link in the repo and found the agenda link in the calendar invite. They're all dead. I think we need to go through while we do DEI changes. Um, just look for dead links too, because I found other dead links, but I don't remember where they are. <laughs> so. And that I think that's just something that has to happen every once in a while anyway. Um, could, could you be, where is this? What is this? Uh, the one I last found was in the um, calendar invite to the meeting. I clicked the agenda and meeting minutes link and it did not go anywhere. It went to a 404 on Google. But I, I mean, I found, it, I found dead links occasionally in other places. Uh, maybe we need to do a sweep every every metrics release or something. Just click all the links, open all the. Which pages. agenda didn't work? The D DNI working group meeting. Yeah, agenda that works for me. The Bitly. Oh, uh, I think I mean I think I might need to change on here. This is the this is the badging specific one. Uh, from the, if you don't want to get the chaos calendar, but you want a, a, an invite one. Oh, I was in the wrong invite. Sorry. That also works for me. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. I get an. I get a. I get actually a plain text HTML page that says "not found 404." So I'm not sure what's what's going on. I'll have to figure out okay. what's going on. Okay, Mike. That's fair. I mean, a quick sweep on the few things that I looked at. All they were all going to the right agenda. Huh. Okay. Sorry about that. Maybe my point is a little moot here. Um, well, and if, if they aren't, um, I can change them pretty quickly. So just send me an email because I'm one of the owners of the calendar. Yeah, okay. I, what I meant was that I, we created a badging, chaos.badging at gmail.com invite just for the people who go to badging but don't have all the chaos calendar in, in, their, in their calendar. Okay. 
So it was, it was actually just a, it's a, it's kind of a, a one-off event creation, but we'll, we'll, I'll fix that on our side. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, so other than that, do we have anything else we want to talk about during this meeting? It looks like we have about 13 minutes left if we want to have that time. Um, we don't have to do it now, but I'm going to share my screen really fast. Like in terms of, I think maybe in 2021, we should start taking a look at, at metrics development in, in DNI. So we've spent a few of the meetings in the past working through issues and pull requests. Um, and so here's kind of the current state of affairs in, in DNI. <laughs> it might, um, We've been kind of, we got kind of bogged down <laughs> in this documentation stuff. And uh, so maybe we could move off of that and start looking somewhere else <laughs> and think about diversity, equity, and inclusion with a maybe a different set of, of metrics that are inspiring. <laughs> in the sense that we're not continuing to look at them and, and go in circles. So uh, is there anything, I, you know, part of me is like, is there anything here that... <laughs> I think listening and speaking are great ideas um, for how we build new metrics. Um, and, and, and it sounds like your dogs are speaking quite a bit right now. <laughs> I was gonna say, yeah, if you like, I was gonna, I should update my, my status thing. This is if you like dog hair and barking. <laughs> <laughs> get a border collie if those two things are what you're seeking out <laughs> um, and and sh and and working with sheep apparently which i <laughs> i don't do um, so the next I time to, um i don't know to do a few more in some of the areas that we don't have that many metrics so that there's a little more a little more breadth because it looks like we've gone sort of deep dive into things like event diversity and leadership, um, but not so much in recognition of good work, community exclusivity and contributor community diversity. It might be good to get a few in, in each of the areas. We need to bring the Augur team in for contributor community diversity and make Augur metrics for it. That would be great. <laughs> I think that's a, I like that idea. Um, is there any um, listening and speaking? Do we have any documents for those? I feel like we should. Like we, you know, some Google Docs. You know, we kind of rough out some of the metrics originally. I don't know if they've ever been started myself. Okay. Um, well, maybe put an action item. I'll, um, is there, how about this too? I mean, part of this is that there's something that draws people's attention. So Don had brought out the different focus areas. Are there, and Matt, you had mentioned speaking and listening. I don't know if that was because of my dog or because real. So is there anything that we, we do want to move forward with? I just think listening and speaking are hard things to capture and hard things to talk about for a lot of people um, because okay. the, people get stuck on ideas about things like that. And it's hard to be unbiased about something like that. Does that, if that makes any sense? Um, so I think it's good to, it, like we've been, it looks like to me, it looks like we've been capturing more of the easy to capture metrics um, and, and not so much on the ones that are more difficult or, um, or, or, I guess it's more difficult to, to put into words. So I think it'd be a nice exercise for us to do something that was harder. So are you leading us here? That's just my opinion, but yeah. <laughs> but I see them in progress and we don't see any document or anything for both of these. No, I know, that's so. why I was asking. Well, maybe now they're in progress. Maybe now that we're <laughs> moving towards <laughs> thinking about them, we can consider them in progress. So I have one logistic question. Actually, I think I found, I think I found one of them. Okay. I'll drop it in the chat. Yeah. You can confirm that that's the one we're talking about. 
Uh, I have a one logistic question with Elizabeth. Like, since you have created Kiosk uh, Google account, and so far right now, what we are doing for any metric, anyone creates a Google Doc and just keeps a link and shares it to everyone. So, is it better if we uh, now create all the Google Docs within the Kiosk account and like put it there? Yeah, I mean, whatever's easiest, whatever makes sense. So if we want to do that, that's totally fine. We can make a new folder for um, metric development. I, I, that's also something we could bring up at the community call yeah. on Tuesday, just to see what the other working groups would like to do. That's a great idea, though, Vinod. Yeah. yeah. So that has to be it, Don. I mean, it's the same focus area. It's the same name. So I put it in the, the spreadsheet. And so for next week, how about I'll, I'll take an action item to kind of start just looking at this metric, you know, so it can be presentable a little bit more to the group. Sounds good. Okay. I think I also found one for speaking, but it's, it's a markdown page and it's very much a stub. It doesn't actually have any information really in it. But I think that might be. Gotcha, yeah. Oh, I, I guess I created that page. <laughs> you don't remember? <laughs> <the> last commit. <laughs> <laughs> How do you not remember that? Yeah. <laughs> Don, I don't remember anything ever, so don't feel bad. <laughs> Which one was this? This was speaking. Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. Well, I both of them are released in the spreadsheet, so we have like something to yeah. at least start going off of. Okay. Cool. And then I thought maybe just for the agenda next week too, we could. Spend a little bit of time going through any of the open issues and pull requests. It's always great to kind of keep that reined in. Yeah, we also have a lot of great metric ideas on the issues and pull requests that we could turn into metrics. We do. Yeah, yeah right, and maybe there are oh, twenty-two sorry. open issues. So I think yeah. an issue scrub is probably. I think we're due. Yeah, I think so too. A number of them, so we had this talk last week, a number of them are, are um, labeled as like a metric idea. Mm -hmm. And we were wondering, like, we weren't really sure, like, should we keep those there? Should we just move them into the spreadsheet and close the issue and link to the spreadsheet? You know, do we, we can get them out of the issues pretty easily. But then if somebody started working at work on it, they would just create another issue and link a Google Doc. So yeah. I we can we can leave it there. I mean it's okay to have a bunch of open issues that are valid open issues. That's not a big deal. But I think we should at least scrub through it and make sure that there aren't any that we can just that are done that we can close. Right on. Okay, yeah, well, would anybody like to take an action item to maybe do a quick scan of the issues before the next meeting to see if there are a few that might be candidates for discussion? I'll, I'll take that. <laughs> Yay. Thank you, Ruth. Thanks, Ruth. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, Ruth. So, uh, please kind of drop the link. Uh, Chat, so I just bookmark it. Okay. Well, thank you, everybody. It looks like we'll get about four minutes back on our on our um, on our hour, and. That looks like we um, we're pretty done for today. We got a lot done, and we have a lot to do. So, all right. Well, thanks, Matt. Thanks, Thank everybody. You, everybody.
Thanks, Matt. Bye, everybody. Bye, everyone. Bye.